He alone is worthy. before the word comes. Father, we pray that you would be pleased today with our gifts that we bring to you, O God. We bring our talents before you. We bring our substance, O God, ourselves. Father, we know that we are not worthy to be in thy presence. But because Jesus, you died on the cross, that gives us access, somebody say access, to the throne room. And when we get in the throne room, O oh God, Father, O oh God, you are there to bless us and meet our every need. Thank you for being our need meter today. Does anybody have any needs today? Oh, I'm in need, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm in need, Jesus. Come on, somebody say it. Oh, I'm in need. Would you meet my need? Mm. Come on, somebody say it. Oh, I'm in need. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm in need. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm in need. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm in need. Would you meet my need? If you're in need, let him come. Hallelujah. Oh, if you're in need, let him come. Hallelujah. If you're thirsty, let him come. Hallelujah. Would you meet my need? 
Oh, I need you, Jesus. Hands lifted all over the building. Oh, I need you, Jesus. Oh, I need you, Jesus. I'm going to need the Lord to bless you today. Hallelujah.
Somebody just throw your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. I fight better with my hands up. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I praise you right there. I fight better with my hands up and praise. In the world, the posture is getting ready like this. But how many know in Christendom, the body of Christ, amen, the fighting posture is a place of worship. Oh, Lord, I bless your holy name today. Hallelujah. There is a sweet spirit in this place. And somebody declare, it's the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody couldn't feel him in the whirlwind or in the fire or in the still voice. But how many know he's in the room? He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. Somebody acknowledge he's in the room. He's in the room. He's here. Touch him as he's going by. Touch him. Touch him with your praise. Touch him with your worship. Touch him, oh God. Touch him. He's in the room. He's in the room. Whatever you need. 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 Ask him. Ask him. Whatever you want. Hallelujah. Ask him. Hallelujah. Oh, ask him now. Hallelujah. Don't let him go by. Don't let him pass you by. Without touching the hymn of his God. Don't you let him pass you by without telling him your story. Tell him your needs, hallelujah. He's a need meter, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Lord, we need a blessing. Lord, in this season change, does anybody stand in need of a blessing right now? Hallelujah. Somebody declare, I need a season change now. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. It's still your season. You may have thought, I don't know who this is for, that the Lord has forgotten you, but this is still your season. Somebody say, it's still mine. It's still mine. It belongs to me. Don't you let the enemy steal your joy in this season. The joy that you have, the world didn't give it to you. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Somebody say, I still got my joy. I still got my joy. Still have my joy. I still have my joy. I still have my peace. I still have my peace of mind. Bless you, Jesus. Father, we've already decreed and declared healing on those that are our family members that are going through right now. Somebody say it's already done. It's already done. So help our unbelief. We believe, but help our unbelief. That's that little place of doubt. Somebody say, I'm casting away my fear. And I rely on the totality of faith. That God is in charge of my life. Somebody say, God is in charge of my life.
of my life. How many believe that today? God is in charge of my life. Mm. I feel it in the spirit, y'all. Said God. He's in charge. He's in charge. He's in charge. 
Give him a shout of hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless you. Lord, you're good to us. And we thank you, oh God. Amen. We got a good word for you today. Amen. We thank God for the praise and the worship. We thank God for stopping by. Amen. And entreating his spirit today with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles. Amen. To the book of John. Amen. First lady has already alluded to. Amen. God so loving the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That is our theme. That is our theme for our topic today. Our topic today is God trusts you, but why can't you trust him? I said, God trusts you, but why can't you trust him? And we've already did our prayer. Amen. We've already, amen, blessed the Lord. And we thank God for those, amen, that are tuned in to be a part of our worship experience today. Now, God, he trusts us with, amen, freedom of will. And how many know that's huge? Yes. When God gives you the ability to choose him or the world, if I was in control or in charge, amen, the type of boss I would be is I'm going to make you worship me. I'm going to make you praise me because I created you. And your Bible says that you were wonderfully, fearfully created. So I, if I was the one that created you, then I would make you remember how you were created. A lot of times we've forgotten where God has brought us from. And along the journey, it's easy to forget, amen, where God brought you from. We walk with him for a while, amen. We, we, we walk with the Lord for a little, little while. And then somehow we get to the place where we think we're doing and walking on our own. Your Bible declares that a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. So if God orders and he creates and he allows, amen, and he prevents the enemy from our total destruction and demise, how in the world can we not trust God? Somebody say, I, I've got to learn how to trust him. We don't automatically get to a place of trust. You got to learn how to trust him. Look to your neighbor and say, you know you have trust issues. You know you got trust issues. Mm -hmm. Look at somebody on the other row and say, you know, you know you got trust issues. How many know we all got some trust issues? Here now, amen, John's gospel, the 10th chapter. Amen. We got to work our way to Daniel today. Amen. Those that may be watching, amen, this word going to bless you, so don't go nowhere. 
Hallelujah. Amen. John's gospel. Amen. The 10th chapter. Amen. 22nd verse. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Somebody say, it was a certain season. And how many know that you're going to face seasons in your life, amen, where there's going to be cold moments. But we got to get through the winter. Jesus walked in this temple in Solomon's porch. There came Jews round about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Somebody say, tell me the truth. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them, what? Eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Somebody say, this is my promise. This is the Lord's promise to you that he loves you, he created you, and can nobody pluck you out of his hand. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Somebody say we are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered, Them many good works have I showed you from my father, for which of those works do you stone me? In other words, Jesus said, Why are you stoning me? Not just for the works, y'all, but for what? The good works. Why are you getting mad when all I've ever done has been good to you? I was watching and I didn't mean to park here, but I see it. Amen. I, I saw the on the animal channel, there's this dominant male animal. And, and actually it's a zebra. And there's another male zebra. The female has had a little zebra, baby zebra. And the male dominant zebra is trying to drown the baby zebra in the water. So he's biting this baby baby zebra on the back of its neck and has his front two hooves and legs trying to drown this baby that haven't done what? No wrong. Jesus said, why do you stone me when all I've ever been to you is good? Does that sound familiar? Sometimes people, amen, get mad or they get Amen. Because territory is threatened. Now here, how many know the devil is threatened by the authority of the territory, amen, that is already yours, but is waiting for you to claim. Somebody says, waiting for me to claim it. My authority over my territory, y'all need to pray for me, y'all. Somebody say, my authority over my territory is waiting for me to claim. If you got a vehicle that need to be fixed and the parts are still at the store, how many know it's waiting for you to go pick it up before you can start driving? Amen. Amen. Here it is. Jesus says that all I've ever done was good. Why do you stone me? Hallelujah. Jesus answered him. 33 says, for a good work we stone thee not, they said, the Jews is answering, but for blasphemy and because thou being a man, you make it yourself like God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? And I said, ye are gods. Say ye of him whom, or 35 says, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, 
and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, somebody say, I do. I do. Though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. So the opening of this word today is talking about believing that God and Jesus are one. Somebody say they are one. God is the father of creation, the son and redemption, the Holy Spirit and regeneration of the believer of the church. This passage of scripture is the believer's assurance to know that if God said it, Jesus confirms it, and the spirit allows you to be manifested, amen, as a byproduct of the child of God. How many believe that, amen, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins? Amen. And he rose on the third day, amen, to make us, amen, amen, joint heirs with this huge inheritance called life. Mm -mm -mm. Can you imagine somebody giving you life, amen, and you knew you would live forever, amen? This ain't no fairy tale. How many know this is the truth? <laughs> you have it when you receive Christ. And I know I got to move on because we got a long way to go. If you receive Christ, how many know that you have inherited, amen, eternal life? That's the truth. And what is truth? Somebody said, what is truth? It's fact or reality. It's a, the belief is a fundamental or spiritual reality. That's what truth is. It's a fundamental fact or it's a spiritual fact. That's what truth is. A truth theory is congruent with your experience. How many know that if you've gone through something and you have the experience, you have the facts, can nobody come and say that is not true because what? You went through it. You have truth, true experience of what you've gone through. And your experience, your experience will carry you through life because you endured it. You went through it. We saw through the pages of the letter of the Bible Amen. What Jesus went through to go to Calvary for our redemption. Amen. We saw it. Here now, amen, as we go to the beat of our word, amen, turn your Bibles to the book of Daniel. To the book of Daniel. We got a lot of stuff going on in the world today, y'all. And I'm telling you, social media and, and this huge thing about Beyonce is it, getting a lot, a lot of feedback in the world. And it's crossed over to the spiritual realm. Uh, some of the Clark sisters gave Beyonce, amen, some of the rights to sing some of the lyrics of the song that the Clark sisters sung. Amen. Does somebody know the name of this album that Beyonce just wrote? Anybody know it? Somebody Google it and look it up. It's a new album, and it's talking about her being a God's girl or church girl and how... It's different lyrics, and it's, and it's huge in the world today. A lot of pastors are speaking on it and preaching on it, and I just want to touch on it because if you're not careful, amen, you will be pulled, you'll be lured. How many know lured, lured and pulled is the same expression? You got it? What's the name of it? Renaissance. And it is indicative of has some lyrics and somebody find the lyrics about church in there for me and I'll just read some of the lyrics. Amen. Amen. And how many know that you're either in the world or you're in Christ? You're either in the kingdom of darkness or what? The kingdom of light. There is no in between. There is no purgatory. There is no place that you can go and, and, and find yourself outside of God's eyes. Mm. Your Bible says that even when it's dark outside, it's all light to God because God sees no darkness. Isn't it amazing that God created the light and he created the darkness, but even in the darkness, it's still light to God. 
And I'm going to give you a, a, an example of what I mean. How in the murky, muddy waters can an alligator see in the dark? So why can't we believe what God says in his word? How I many know animals they, in the water is dirt? They can see, right? How can they see in the dark? Because God, what, created them to be able to see in the dark. So we can believe in that, but we can't believe in God. God trusts you. Why can't you trust him? Here now, the book of Daniel, the second chapter. Amen. Go there with me. Amen. I believe this is going to bless you real good today. Amen. Daniel, the second chapter. Amen. When you get there, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Here it is. Daniel 2, we're starting at the 17th verse. Hallelujah. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of God, of heaven, concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. We're just going to set it up in a moment, but stay with me. When then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes, this is key, this is key and he changes the times and the season. Who does it? He changes the times and the seasons. <laughs> He removes kings and he set it up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O God, of my fathers, whom have given me wisdom and might and have made known unto me now what we we desired of him, of thee. For thou have now made known unto us the king's matter. And to set it up, Daniel, this is the story of Daniel and the Hebrew boys. We know them as the Hebrew names, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and what? Abednego. Hallelujah. Not a Hyundai or a Hyundai or a Honda Abednego. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and Daniel. These were their Hebrew names. Somebody say, I'm a Hebrew. And if you didn't know it, you're a Hebrew and you're a Jew. You, you've just been adopted into the family of God. Amen. Somebody say, I've been adopted. Here it is. I want to give you, if you're writing down, amen. These are the Hebrew names, amen, that they had. But they were in Babylonia. They were captive, held captive, amen, under this king called King Nebuchadnezzar. And here is their Babylonian names that the king gave them. If you write it down, here they go. One of their names is Hananiah, Hananiah. Let me, let me, let me make sure y'all understand me. The Hebrew names, amen, I gave you their Babylonian names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Belteshazzar was their uh, Babylonian names. Y'all with me say amen. amen. So these were the names that King Nebuchadnezzar gave them. Belteshazzar was Daniel's name, and Daniel was his Hebrew name. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are there what? Babylonian names, right? That King Nebuchadnezzar gave them. Now here are their Hebrew names. Somebody say Hebrew names. How many know you better correct it and get it right, right? <laughs> amen. So Hananiah, amen, Mishael, and Azariah. These were their Hebrew names. And I'm going to tell you what their Hebrew names are. 
Hebrew, the Hebrew name for Hananiah is who is what God is. Who is what God is. No, let me change, let me change it. How long if you write it down? Hananiah, because I got it written down, and I, I didn't mean to go deep on second Sunday, but Hananiah is Yah is gracious if you're writing down. Somebody say Yah. Yah. For, for Yahweh, y'all know that. Yah is gracious. That's Hananiah. All right. Michelle is who is what God is. Michelle is who is what God is. And Azariah is Yah has helped. All right. So I know that we kind of got a little mixed up there. Y'all ready? Say amen. Y'all with me? Say amen. All right. So I gave y'all Hebrew names and I gave y'all Babylonian names. So pastor, why did you do all that? Because how many know in the world... People what? Change their names. All of that was for this. If your mama named you such and such, you get in the world, you become a rapper, guess what he gonna do? He's gonna change his name. Your mama didn't name you them names that y'all come up with. So here is, if we back to this, this worldly artist named Beyonce who know all about what? The church. Did anybody get the lyrics of that verse yet? Anybody? Y'all got to help me. What is it? Um, got to speak loud so we can hear you. The song is the song, um, Break My Soul. This is the new album she just released. It's, yes, it, the song one, on the album that you're referring to. Breaks, it has something to do with church in it. Okay, there is a lyric that says, um, I'm taking my new salvation back and I'm going to build my own foundation. Okay, you keep that's part of it, but somebody y'all keep googling it. You, you can just interrupt me anytime. It has the world word church girl in it. You'll see it when you and I'm glad that y'all not like worldly people because <laughs> you know you would found it already. So this is our delivery today, and this is very, very important because we're talking about being in the kingdom of light as opposed to the kingdom of darkness. There is even her older albums. There is, she changed her name to what? When she fierce or something like that. Y'all remember that? When Sasha, yep, Sasha fierce. When she gets into that place, she can she she goes into a different mode when she's performing. Some of y'all may not be experienced with that. Those that's watching, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, artists when they're in that realm, they go to another place. Another spirit takes over them. Here now, which is relative to our word today, amen, don't let your surroundings, Babylonian, control and change who you are. I'm going to say it again. Don't let your surroundings, don't let your environment, don't let the atmosphere you are in change who you are called to be. Hello, somebody say, I've been called to be the head and not the tail. You can be rich and still be the tail. Because mm -hmm. you don't realize who your daddy is. You're either the, you're either the part of the kingdom of light or kingdom of darkness. Here it is. As we go a little deeper, this message is going to bless you. So here we're at Amen. the second chapter. We're at 24. And the Bible reads on this wise. We're going to actually we're going to go to. Uh, Daniel third chapter. Let's go to Daniel third chapter. We've already discussed their names, and Daniel's name. I didn't give you his. It was changed to Belshazzar. Bel will protect. That's in the Babylonian. But his name Daniel in the Hebrew means to judge. Daniel was a judge. Not only was he called to judge, Amen, but he was a man a prayer warrior, Amen. He sought the Lord in prayer, Amen. So here now we have Daniel 3. This story is going to lead us to the fiery furnace, but there has to be a correlation. I got, you, got us in, in, normally we would do this type of teaching on Wednesday, amen, but I got to give you this because I believe it's going to bless us. It's going to change how we think. Be careful of worldly systems that control you. They change your name. They change your behavior. They change your character, amen, institutions. Amen. They want to resemble Christ, but they don't want the reflection of Christ. So if you're writing down, they want to resemble Christ, 
but they don't want the reflections of Christ. Did y'all catch that? What did I say? They want to resemble Christ, but they don't want the reflection of Christ. How many know that you see your reflection in a mirror? You don't see no resemblance. That's you. Hello. How many know we need to look like Christ? Not a form of godliness, but denying the power there. Somebody got it. What does it say? I want to make sure you got it. Mm -hmm. That's the lyrics, right? In her song. One of them, yeah. All right. And then there was another one that I've seen. All right. Um, when you get it, just let me know. We'll stop. We're at. Bad girls acting snotty. Yeah, that was one of them. Girl. There's something cursing in here. And then it says. Please don't say the curse word. <laughs> it says, you know, you've got church in the morning, in the morning, but you're doing God's work. You're going in. Now, this is what this is all about, y'all. The enemy is so bold. He is so braggadocious that he'll make you remember where you came from, but he'll make you forget that he took you away from, amen, the protection where God wanted to get you to. Because how many know there is no protection in the world? You have eternal security in Christ. Somebody say eternal security. Because it's called everlasting life. And this is the trickery of Satan. Once he gets you in the world, he introduces you to the fire country. And guess what? Many times you don't make it back. You get there. How many know when you go to Vegas? Two, three days. That's about it. It's time to what? Get back. Because you'll want to what? Stay yep. in Vegas. Anybody know that? You've been there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Here now we're going to come to the meat of the word. Amen. We're in Daniel's third chapter. Y'all ready? Y'all with me? Say amen. amen. All right. Daniel's third chapter. Help me out, brother Caleb. Daniel's third chapter. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. He made an image of gold whose height and three score cubits and the breadth thereof were six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and captains and judges and treasurers, the counselors and the sheriffs and the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image with Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. How many know that entertainers want to be what? Worshipped. They want to be worshipped. They don't realize that they have set themselves on a place, on an altar of sacrifice. I mean, if you really look at this for face value, somebody say faith, for what it really is, for what truth is. Why in the world would you set yourself up to be worshipped? I mean, really look at it. You're entertaining people and they're worshipping you. But how many know in the natural you don't see it that way? You think you're performing. But what people are really doing, they've come, they have paid. I'm trying to break this down. They have given, they have spent time. And I've watched some of those things and some of those big concerts. And how many know they, they go all out? Music got to be right. The stage got to be right. Security got to be right. To watch one person perform and people in the audience, they're worshiping this artist. King Nebuchadnezzar got all these people together. Say, at the sound 
of the trumpet and the clarinet and all those things, and I'm giving you the, the, the paraphrasing all of this, I want everybody to what? Bow down and worship me. So we fast forward some of this message. Amen. There were some people that came to the king and said, guess what, king? We know the decree that when the sound of the clarinet and all that, but it's three that will not bow down and worship you. What was their names? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These were the names that they were given when they were captured in Babylonia. And how many know that you got to come from out of the world, what, into this marvelous light? That was the old you. Their Hebrew names was the old them. Remember that, because how many know you better never forget your name? Never forget where you come from. Never forget your story or your testimony. Because the far country will make you forget, amen, really the grace of God. That, that was really has a, a Hananiah's name that Yah is gracious. How many know the Lord been good to you? He's been gracious to you. Do you know the stuff that God prevented? Amen. And he stopped the devil from destroying you? I like to watch, you know, videos of all kinds of uh, nature and even like accidents that happen. There's so many accidents that happen that's caught on film. But how many know the Lord? He'll keep you safe yes. under the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> Here now, because I got to fast forward some of this, we're at third chapter uh, of Daniel. Amen, amen. And, 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 and now a, a, cree, a herald cry went out loud, and it was commanded to all the people, all the nations. In all languages. How many know the devil wants everything? The devil wants everyone to bow to him. And watch this. He wants every system. Y'all getting this? Every governmental platform. Every social media outlet. He wants them to bow to him. You got to be careful, y'all, because even some of the places that you work are controlled for you to be in a system of control to where you're not allowed to freely operate in Christ or be the Christian you were. Remember what I said? You resemble, but it's not the reflection. You look in a mirror, that's you. Hallelujah. But somebody say, oh, that resembles them. That resembles, you look at your child, that resembles them, but that's not them. The devil, amen, will make you think that you are, amen, the reflection, but you are you have changed and become a resemble of Christ, having a form of God. I hope I hope that really gets in your spirit. Here now, we're at, I want you to go to 12. You dare say amen. Amen. We're at 3 and 12. Amen's coming in. Amen. There are certain Jews. Who thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Mm -hmm. 14. Remember our, our theme today is God trusts you. Why can't you what? Trust him. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they brought these men before the king. 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto him, Is it what? True. Remember now, he, he keeps calling their name. It's, it's important that you've got to know who you are and who you are what? Not. How I many know his power in the name of Jesus? But if you go in some other far off countries and try to call the name of Jesus, they're going to cut your head off. How many know you got to be in the right circumstance, the right situation in order to use the name of Jesus? How many know God is not going to let you use him? Amen. Hello. Amen. God will get you to a point. That's, that's a whole nother message. What verse do you? 14. 14. 
Nebuchadnezzar said, spake, and he said unto them, Is it true? Do you not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, let's go all the way down uh, to 19. Oh, actually, we, we got to read this. We gotta, I'm trying to rush this, but we got to read it. 15. Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbut, the psaltery, the ducimer, and all kinds of music. Y'all see that? And I hate to say it, but all kinds of music, it is not uplifting. All types of music, it is not good food for what? Your soul. The king is saying, look, whatever I play, you still got to worship. And I'm trying to rush all this. You, no matter if it's this, 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 I want the goal is for you to worship me. Oh, but this is inspirational. I want you to worship me. Oh, they got all type of talent. Y'all know people can sing and play, but how many know it's not holy music? He said, all these things, I want you to worship me. Hallelujah. What verse? 16, 16 says, oh, are we at the middle of 15? At all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour to the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Mm. The, the king is already saying there are different types of God. Y'all can see it in the text. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't say O king. They said O Nebuchadnezzar. They even called him by his first name. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Now, we have heard this story, right? And, and, and we've been, they've preached it down and they've taught it. But it's more than just the trial of the fire. You got to trust him, amen, as you make your way to the hardest part of this trial. It's a process before the fire. It's a learning curve of learning lessons. It's how you go through what you're in. I'm going to say it again. It's how we endure the trial. Amen. Amen, somebody. It's a trial. Guess what? I got I got two vehicles that I personally own. You know, me and my wife, we own stuff, but these are my vehicles. They're ours, but y'all know what I'm saying? I drive them. Both of them are down. So me and my whole family, we got to, you know, we got to, you know, we got to shuffle the deck to get folk to work and all those things. This is a natural Experience, but it's what? A trial. So how many know it's it's tough sometimes to endure your trial? Y'all ain't talking to me. And I'm talking just talking about vehicles. Anybody else been in some trials? All kind of trials, death. Amen. We got two two family members that's really, amen, sick right now. How many know it's a trial? Somebody say it's a trial. And it's a true trial. It's not nothing made up. It's, it's real. You feel it. There's so many other people's trials that's worse than a vehicle. So we got to understand that if God trusts you with Jesus, his son, and salvation, you got to be able to trust him with your trial. That he'll bring you through. He'll bring you out. Amen. And he'll even bring he'll even walk you to the to the door of the furnace. How many know it's still a trial? It's still a test. Mm. Sometimes people won't think it's a test until you write it on paper and you get a result. But some tests don't come with scores. Hello, somebody. Some exams don't come with a physical 78. 
Some tests come with headaches. Some trials come with stomach ulcers. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Some tests come with cancer. Well, I wish I had a church to preach to. Some trials come with bad, fractured relationships. Mm-hmm. And you'd be like, oh, I didn't know I was in a trial. Well, what you think you've been in the last four years? It's been a trial. This is a trial leading up to the fire. The fire is not the trial. It's walking to, amen, the place of fear. Do you trust them before you get thrown into the fire? Somebody say hallelujah. What verse? 17 says, hallelujah, watch this, we're almost done. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, he is able to deliver us. Somebody say he's able to deliver us. All right, now, 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of anger, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just so y'all know, the king had already set them up as leaders in Babylon. Some of y'all know this, and our, our Facebook watchers, they know this. You could be functioning, but it still don't mean you're not under control. Some people function as puppets. <laughs> As long as you do what they say do, you all right. But as soon as you go against what they want you to do, not bowing down, guess what? Now it's time for the fire. Here we're almost at worship. Amen. I'm going to get to the gist of it now. Amen. Go to 20, the 20th verse. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army. Watch this to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their garments, and were cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. Brother Mike, I, I wonder why the writer tells them that they were cast in with their clothing. Because guess what the devil wants to do to you? He wants to prove <laughs> to everybody that's watching that he still has control over you. No matter what's going on. Why in the world would they just throw him in quickly? Didn't give him time to do anything. How many know that control is so powerful? That's how, that's how quick you can lose control of your, amen, salvation or your ability, amen, to follow Christ. That quick. Just like that. The Bible says, don't be what? Conformed to this world. But be what? Transform. They didn't give time to change. You're going in just like you are. With your clothes. But what they didn't understand, I wish I had time to preach this. When they didn't understand that I'm going in, amen, with my fundamental belief. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going in with my experience of my faith. What I wear, amen, is who I am. How many know you are who you are? Somebody stand up and say, I am what I am. That's really what he was saying. So here now with verse 22nd verse says, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace was exceeding hot. The flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these mighty men that were in the king's army that threw what the Hebrew boys in the furnace, what happened to them? They died. They died just like that. Just like that. Guess what? The devil don't care about you. You got to get this, y'all. Come on, somebody catch it. The devil don't care who he used. He don't care who he get rid of. That's why gangs, it, 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 there is no street code. 
They say it is, but how I many know the devil ain't got no street code? He what? Trying to kill you. People dying every day. Thinking that they're in some type of family. What did we say that? You're of your father, what? The devil. Jesus says, what? My sheep. They know, they hear, they know it, they hear it. And they what? They follow. What voice are you following? Come on, worship. What, what voice are you listening to? It's for everybody. As you walk through truth, what makes you fearful? What makes you doubt? Are you doubting the fire? Or are you doubting the authority of the king? Are you fearing the devil? Or are you fearing, amen, what might happen, amen, if your friends see you in Christ? Hello, somebody. How many know the Bible says, I'm not going to what? Be ashamed of the gospel, what? Because it's the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew, to the Greek, and to what? The church of God. These were Jews thrown into the fire. Verse. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. <laughs> it says they what? Fell down, bound. Wow, they got thrown in. They fell down. This is important. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. He rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. This whole delivery is talking about what? Truth. Somebody say truth. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Somebody say free. If you're going to go down, you better go down believing in God. If they're going to fire you, you, you stand on your morals. If they're going to get rid of you, let them get rid of you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones said, remember, when you go into the interview, you want this job, but let them know who they're getting. You tell them who you are. I hear you, Black Panther. Tell them who you are. How many know that you are valuable? Don't you let anybody take advantage of you. If you're going to go down, go down believing in God. Hello, because that's true. And how many know if you go down, you're going down in God? The Bible don't say it. But when they fell down, bound, they were tied to their belief. How many know they fell down worshiping? Now, I'm not putting it in there, but how many know that's what, that's what they were doing? Good verse. And he answered, watch this, I'm almost done. He says, and we're at the middle of 25, I see, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. How in the world does this king of Babylonia, amen, come out of his mouth that the fourth one looked like the son of God? This is for us, y'all, the reader. 2022, this is for us to know that Jesus is and he was and he's what? Soon to come. 7.13, somebody get there. Daniel 7.13, I want, I want somebody to read it in a second. I want you to read loud. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire. Lord, he, he called, the, he called the, 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 the face of it, the front of it, the entrance of it, a mouth. 
to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high God. This is how he was yelling. Come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Princes and governors, captains and king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whom bodies of fire had no power, nor was their hair of their head sins, neither were their coats changed. It's getting good now, ain't it? That means that, amen, if you go down, you're going in Jesus, amen. I don't care what the world, amen, says. I don't care what it looks like to the world, amen. How many know God knows your name? God know what he put on you. God put an anointing on you and can't no devil in hell take it away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I know that God knows my name. Thank you, Jesus. And God don't have to change your name because he know you're going to stand on truth. He know you're not going to waver. Hallelujah. He know you're going to be sound in your decision. Take me to the furnace. Woo! Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Take me to the fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah. I, where, where'd that song come from? Well, take me what? To the, to the king. As a result of humble obedience. Lord, if I go down, I'm going down believing in truth. My belief. Mm. We're, we're bursting. I'm, I'm closing. Watch this. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God. It says, Neither was their coach changed. Nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. There's that word. What's that word? Trusted in him. What is this whole message about? Trusting in him. If God trusts you, why can't we trust in him? And have changed. And then, and I want y'all to understand something. A lot of these sermons, you know, you don't do a whole lot of reading because you do that in leisure. You just give certain scriptures in, you know, in the service time or at the worship experience. But I wanted to read all those because this whole book, this whole trial is about what? Trust. Y'all with me? It's about trust. Do you trust him? Because I'm talking to myself as I speak. Do you trust him in the process of this trial? It's more about the trust than it is the trial. Because how many know God has already brought you through it and out of it, you just walking in it right now. It's already done. We just got to check your unbelief. You know how they say check your coat at the door? <laughs> Somebody check your trust at the door. Hallelujah. Let me, let me just finish it. Amen. He have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they may not serve nor worship any God except their what? Own God. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language would speak anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God, somebody say no other God, that can deliver after this manner or this kind. Then the king promoted mm, 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 Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Somebody say, get ready for promotion. 
get ready for promotion. After your trial, you got to go through the trial, get ready to be promoted. Hallelujah. Somebody read that verse. Daniel 7 and 13. Then they answered and said, Before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Oh, I'm sorry. 7 and 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. Everybody standing. Today's message, today's delivery, today's uh, sermon is all about trust. Fire is there. Fire is going to come. How many know you're going to have trials whether you're young or old? Whether you're rich or poor, we're going to have trials. We're going to have experiences that lead us to the furnace, to the mouth of the furnace. But the Bible says that not only was their hair not singed, there was no smell on their clothes. Amen. Their spirits were not tainted. They held on to their belief. You got to hold on, cling to your truth. Amen. If you trust God, amen, trust him, amen, with everything. Amen. Don't trust him with, with a little. Don't trust him with this. Trust him with everything. Amen. In everything, what? Give thanks. Because this is what the will of God, what? Concerning you. Father, as we pray out, Father, we love you. We're thankful. We're mindful, God, of your spirit. Father, thank you for the journey. It's in you that we live, we move, we breathe, we have our very being. Lord, we love you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand praise.